Hi everybody, I'm Debbie Reynolds with Rocky Mountain Lodge and I am excited today to show you a couple of excellent summer beverages that you can make that are nice and cool and refreshing. We're gonna show two of them today. We're gonna to do a non-alcoholic version, that's our lemon watermelon cooler. And then we're gonna make one that's a little bit more kicked up, a pomegranate sangria, which is sure to get everybody, all the adults will love that one. It's just something a little bit different, a little twist on a regular sangria. And so, as I like to always do, I like to just tell you a little bit about who I am and who I'm with. I'm with Rocky Mountain Lodge. It's our business that we own, our Cascade Luxury Suite is our vacation rental that you can come and rent up here in the mountains and get away from all of that heat. And you can find both of these recipes I'm making today in my cookbook, uh, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabin's Favorite Recipes. And you can find this on our website at rockymountainlodge.com. And you can just click on the gift shop tab and purchase it from there. And if you enter Facebook Cooking, you can, in the promo code box, you can take $5 off of this cookbook. And so um, for our watermelon cooler, we're gonna start with this one today. I wanna show you a couple of tips, first of all, about picking a good watermelon. It's so discouraging when you go to the store and you're looking forward to that nice, sweet, juicy watermelon, and it, it just comes out plain and has no flavor whatsoever. So the first tip, is there's usually a growth spot on it where it's been sitting down on the ground. Usually there, um, you wanna look for one that has a creamy yellow spot. This one's kind of lime green. I actually couldn't find one when I went to the store the other day to get one that has a creamy yellow spot on it. That's the spot where it's been sitting on the ground and all the rest has been exposed to the sun. The other thing you wanna look for are little spots. Sometimes people might think spots on a watermelon are little rinds, um, little ridges and lines on them are not good. But that's actually opposite. You can see here that this watermelon has some little um, spots on it right here. Um, these little lines. Hi Diana, it's good to see you. It has these little lines right here and this little spot over here. Let me get over there, right here. And so you can see if they have little spots on them in the grooves, that means that they have been pollinated a little bit more by um, butterflies and other critters. And so you wanna pick those. It's actually gonna make them sweeter when they've been pollinated more. So try to get watermelons that um, have yellow spots. This one, like I said, is just more of a lime green. The yellower, the better. And then you wanna see those spots on your watermelons with little dots on them. That just tells you that they've been pollinated and they will taste better and they'll be sweeter. And the heavier watermelon, the better. This one's a little bit on the smaller side, but it's perfect for what I'm gonna use today. And now I'm also gonna show you an excellent tip that I learned a few years ago about how to cut up a watermelon really fast. And so what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're just gonna take a sharp knife and you're gonna cut one end off, just like this. And I just keep my scraps, you can, I just keep them in a bowl here. Um, you can save the, uh, and now we're gonna cut the other end off. And you're gonna cut those scraps off. And if you know anybody that has chickens, just throw these in the chicken coop. Chickens love them. All right, so now that we have those two ends cut off, we're gonna turn one of them and rest it on that one side. And then we're just gonna cut all the way down and around and cut off all of this rind. And I just put it in my little scrap bowl here. And this is really the easiest and the fastest way to cut a watermelon. My husband actually is the one that found this idea. And so we're just gonna go all around. And it's okay if you just don't have those little rinds to hold on to. If you really are attached to those rinds and you wanna have those little perfect triangles with the little rinds, go ahead and do that. But when I wanna cut up a whole watermelon, I'll usually just cube this up and put it in a container in the refrigerator, um, any leftovers that we don't have, and we just munch on it. Just bring the bowl out and we just kinda of snack on that. So this goes really fast, as you can see, we're almost done. So I've got all of that out and you can see this watermelon is a nice red one. And so I'm gonna get all those little white pieces off of there because those don't have any flavor. 
All right. So now we have our watermelon here that you can see. It just looks like a little ball here. So now all I'm gonna do, get that little white piece off, is now I'm just gonna cut it into slices, the whole thing, cut it into slices. Like I said, if you don't care um, to have that little green rind on there when you're eating it, um, this is a great way to do this. And then you can just quarter it or eighth it, however you wanna do that, and just serve them just like this. I'm actually just going to cut cubes out of this. So now I just cut them one way, and then I'm just gonna turn the watermelon another way and cut them again. And now I've got my watermelon, half of it, all cubed up in just a matter of minutes. And I can do the other one just as quickly. For this recipe, I need three cups of cubed watermelon. So I'm just gonna measure these all out here. And I'm gonna try one of these and see how it is. Nice and juicy, has lots of flavor. I did forget to mention that this is a seedless watermelon. Although you can see some seedless watermelons still have little seeds. All right, so I've got too much. So about three cups of seedless watermelon. I need one cup of ice. Crushed ice, which I've already crushed it in my blender. So I'm going to add this three cups of watermelon to my one cup or three cups, one cup of crushed ice, three cups of cubed watermelon. And then I'm going to add two cups of uh, lemonade. And here's a little tip about lemonade. You can buy a good lemonade. I like to buy that simple, simple lemonade or simple orange juice or simply whatever it is and do that when I'm not don't want to make it but if you want to make lemonade from scratch here's a little tip instead of just adding granulated sugar make simple syrup so all simple syrup is is equal parts of sugar and water so like one cup of water to one cup of sugar then you're going to put it on your stove and you're going to boil it just until the sugar is dissolved and then set it aside and now you have simple syrup. It's great for all kinds of things. If you wanna make your lemonade, just add your lemons, your simple syrup, and whatever else you might wanna to add to that and there you go for your lemonade. It makes it a lot easier and that sugar's already dissolved. You wanna cool it first, of course. We're actually gonna use that in our pomegranate sangria as uh, later too. So now I have in here my one cup of crushed ice, three cups of watermelon, and two cups of lemonade. And then I'm just gonna blend this up in my blender. My core doesn't reach. Let me see if I can just turn this a little bit. There you go. You can see my blender. So now it's gonna get a little loud while I blend this here. And so I'm just gonna blend this. Nice and quick. Nice and quick and easy. And here we have a really easy, I'll turn this back over. A really easy lemon watermelon cooler. It'll come out a little foamy, but then all you have to do is put it in a glass or I like to put it in these little um, jars. The kids really love these, they're so fun. You can put it in a mason jar. A lot of times mason jars now will have um, little lids that you can put a straw on. And so here's that. So you can see how pretty that is and how good that looks. So this is our lemon watermelon cooler. And I just got these little jars with cute little straws. And then you can walk away with a great refreshing drink that was super easy to make. Pretty yummy. All right. So I'm going to set this aside. And now we're going to make uh pomegranate sangria something for all of the adults out there that want a little more something something in their drink um great afternoon drink my dad always used to say it's five o'clock somewhere when he would start drinking all right and so move that watermelon aside now this watermelon these watermelon rinds if you know anybody that has chickens or if you compost just throw these out in your compost 
My daughter lived ne lives next door and she used to have a whole bunch of chickens in her chicken coop. So I would just give her the watermelon rinds for the chickens and they would nibble on those. And they had chickens for probably about two years until they all kept getting eaten by the wildlife up here. We have mountain lions, fox, bears, raccoons. And so they lost chickens. They lost some to a bear. They lost some to a mountain lion or bobcat rather. And then they lost the most to um, um, raccoons. They're nasty critters. Anyways, so now they don't have chickens anymore. So we don't get all those yummy fresh eggs anymore. So now what I'm going to make is a pomegranate sangria. This is pretty delicious if you like sangria. And there's a couple of little shortcuts that you can do. One of the shortcuts that I do, this has several ingredients. It has... Um, you're gonna to wanna to get, let me get my recipe right out. All these recipes are in my cookbook. So this is gonna start with um, one bottle of fruity red wine, 750 milliliters, which I actually take a little shortcut and I just buy sangria. And so this is a big bottle, so this is one and a half uh, liters. And so I'm going to get my measuring cup out and measure out 750, let me rinse this out. from the watermelon. So I'm just gonna measure out 750 milliliters in here, which is about a half of one of these bigger bottles of wine. Usually when I make sangria, I put it in a big pitcher and just put it in the fridge and it usually doesn't last more than a couple of days. All right, so we're gonna start with that. Any kind of fruity wine will do, any kind of sweet wine. I've even used glue vine that I've had left over from Christmas time, because it's more on the sweet side. So now I have 750 milliliters or a small regular size bottle of red wine that I'm gonna put in here. Okay, and now we're gonna put two cups of pomegranate juice in here, right there. I'm making a little bit of a mess here. It's what I do, I make messes, okay. Some of the grandkids are coming over. You guys want to say hi? Uh -huh. Then you guys want some watermelon lemonade? Yeah, sure. Okay, this is Annie right here. Say hi, Annie. Hi. These guys live right next door. There are eight of them. I love that they pop over willy-nilly. And this is Gabriel. Gabe, say hi. Okay. All right, what you guys need? Uh, I just want to say hi. Coming to say hi? Oh, Thanks. good. And mommy. Okay, you guys want to share that? Watermelon lemonade. All right, tell, tell everybody what you guys think of it. It's good. <laughs> I like it. All right, just don't drop the bottle. Okay, and now in order to, in addition to this, so in here so far we have our wine, um, one bottle of red wine, two cups of pomegranate juice, and then we're going to add a half a cup of brandy, any kind of brandy, Just this is just plain brandy. Um, apple brandy is also good in there. Then we're gonna add a half a cup of triple sec. And then we're gonna add a half a cup of simple syrup, which remember how we made this? It's just um, equal parts of sugar and water. Boil it until the sugar is dissolved and then just set it aside. I actually like to keep um, a bottle of this in my refrigerator so that I have simple syrup on hand whenever I need it. And then we're going to take a half of a green apple. I'm just gonna use my same cutting board from the watermelon here and cut this up into some slices. So all I'm gonna do, I've washed my fruit, I'm just gonna cut it in half this way so you can see. Now I'm gonna put it on an angle, see if you guys can see that. And I'm just going to cut slices this way. And make sure to hold your fingers like a claw when you're cutting so that you don't cut yourself. I've done that a number of times and I've had to go stitches, get stitches several times. And then we're going to put this in here. And some more folks are coming by. This is Michaela. Say hi, Michaela. And my daughter, Rachel, the mom of eight. And come on over, Alyssa. Say hi. hi. 
All right, and then here's some more watermelon lemonade if you guys want some. Abby, yeah, you guys want to come say hi? Can Joy say hi? No, Joy, stay over here. Sorry. Abby, Hannah, come say hi. There's eight of them. There's only six that can say hi because Rachel does. Foster? Hi. Okay. hi. This one? Hi. There's Abby. So you're going to get to meet several of my grandkids today. Hannah, come over here and say hi. Yep, you guys can all have some of that watermelon. And I've got Joy over here, which is a sweet pea. All right, so I've got... Hannah, say hi. One of these days, I'll get these kiddos to help me out on some of my videos. Hi, say hi, Auntie Barb. Hi, Diana. Okay. Okay. Yep, you guys can take both of those, that and the other. You can't have this. Yeah, you can have some watermelon. Hey, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> All right, Nanny's busy. Get out of here. Eat that. Grab that watermelon. Give a hug. Get that. Get that. <laughs> and this would be, this would be Nanny. this guy. Get out of here. Brian. Okay. <laughs> And then we're going to do the same thing with this orange as we did with the uh, apple, although we're not going to slice it in half. We're just going to make slices. So this I'm just going to slice up in whole slices. And add this orange to this. Now it tells you that you should refrigerate this about four hours just to let all of these flavors marinate and blend together, which I do like to do. So, so far we got all of that fruit in there. You can see that. And then we're also gonna add one cup of grapes that I have cut in half. I did it ahead of time because they take a little more time. So get those grapes in there. And then lastly, we're gonna add a quarter cup of pomegranate seeds. So now typically we're just gonna take this and we are going to let this sit for four to 12 hours and let it marinate and get all of those flavors blended up together. But as my dad always said, it's five o'clock somewhere, so why not start early, right? So I'll take one of these other glasses and give it a little taste. Mm, I like the tang from that pomegranate, the sweetness from that, that um, the wine and the simple syrup, and then all these fruits are gonna give it extra flavor. So now with the rest of this, I'm just gonna pop it in my refrigerator and let it marinate for the next four hours and we'll have some with dinner tonight. So here we go, pomegranate sangria and the lemon watermelon cooler is gone. The grandkids have all come over and gotten it all. So these are a couple of great easy uh, beverages that you can serve over the summer, a non-alcoholic and um, a spiked beverage. You'll be the hit of the party. They go great with barbecues. And then tune in next week and I am going to be making some crab cakes with cucumber dill sauce and Brian's coleslaw. We were on the hunt for a long time to find a good coleslaw recipe because that's what my hubby likes the most um, at a barbecue. And so we found one a number of years ago, tweaked on it a bit and um, it's made it into the cookbook. And so if you want these recipes, you can find them on my website at RockyMountainLodge.com. Click on the recipes tab and you'll be able to find the two recipes we made today, or actually not the two. You'll be able to find the lemon watermelon cooler recipe on the website. If you want the pomegranate sangria recipe, either follow what we've done here, or you can find that recipe in our cookbook, Rocky Mountain Lodge and Cabins, favorite recipes. And you can get that on our gift shop at the website. And if you enter the code Facebook Cooking, you can take $5 off that with the promo code. And it was good to have you guys today. And I'll see you again next week. Bye, everybody.